Hi, Ryan. Michael Galloway here with We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company dot com. Well, we're talking about producing your recording and what the producer does. The producer has to walk in with a plan, and so far we've laid down our basic tracks, our rhythm section. So, what can we come back and do from there? We come back and we tell the engineer, okay, uh, we're, we're ready to take a few next steps. And there's several different things you could do, but what I would like to do, I think usually would be if there's guitars and keyboards, I want to get those laid down as solid as possible. And I'm talking about the basic ones. Not a lot of fancy synthesizers of, uh, you know, or synthesis of, of, say, orchestra or something like that. But if they're, and you don't have to do it this order, but, you know, if there's a good solid rhythm guitar that's going to be on this track, I want it in now. Um, because I want to, I want to really get the feel for how this is going to going to work. Now it's at this stage, and maybe even the last stage. I do want you to pay some attention to something that new musicians, or well, new recording artists, almost never pay attention to: dynamics. Now I understand that there are recordings out there that need to be full tilt all the way through. If it's a certain kind of uh, rock genre, if it's punk, for instance, I can remember an awful lot of punk tunes and the, the uh, newer punk genres where basically you know you come out and you plug in and you play as hard as you possibly can and as fast as you possibly can all the way through. Okay, well that's that genre. But the mistake that many, many garage bands do whether they're playing country or rock and roll or other forms of punk or other, other uh, more nuanced forms, forms of music or pop or whatever they're doing, they forget about dynamics and dynamics are what? They're the louder or softer you are when you're in the song. Now, I'm a songwriter, so I tie that with the songwriting. I often want, not always, but almost 89% of the time, I want the uh, verse to be a little bit lower in intensity than the chorus. And I want the bridge, if I have a bridge in the song, to be kind of like cleaning the palate, a whole new idea of the song. Okay. Well. What your lyrics should be doing is each, uh, each line leading to the next, to the next, to the next, and building up to the hook. And also, the music can do that too, so that by the time you get to the hook, you're just crying it out, or, or ready to cry it out. Now, there's still another nuance, and that is, you want the first chorus, or the first hook line, to be just a little step down compared to the second, and if you have a third, the third. In other words, by the time you get around to the third chorus or the third hook line in the song, the third time you repeat the hook line, that that is the time you're belting it out at the top. And if you hit the top of your dynamics too soon, um, you're, you've kind of lost the arc of the song. Uh, it's, it's not that the song's bad at that point, but you're not going up and out with quite as much dramatics as you might be able to. So pay attention to those things as you begin to add the guitar or keyboard layering on there that's going to start gelling the sound and making it all work. Uh, which, what tonalities you, you want to work on, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, so stay with me tomorrow night and, and uh, take a listen. I am Ryan Michael Galloway and we don't need no stinking record company.com.